The last one is this, we can experience intimacy with partial surrender. Guys, I'm going to challenge you this week. Go home and try to have intimacy with your wife with being partially surrendered. Let me know how that goes for you. Okay? Or how about this one? Go home and tell your wife, wife, I want to have a close, connected relationship with you, but I also want to have a close, connected relationship with this woman over here. How do you think that's going to go? <laughs> not so hot. So you're like, uh, uh, maybe you should have said that. Okay? It's not going to go well, but we act like we can do it with God. We say, God, you know what? I want a relationship with you, but I want it on my terms. I, I want to be able to do things the way I want to do, and I still want to have a relationship with you. I'm partially surrendered to you. I still want that intimacy, but it's on my terms, not on your terms. And the problem is it just doesn't work that way. So, I mean, what is true intimacy? I mean, how, how do we find it? Uh, what is it? And we've already stated that it's everybody's on a different path. So I can't tell you this is intimacy for you because I would be lying to you. I can't say that. But I can tell you a few things that intimacy are. The first one is it's a connection. Uh, just the, the idea of a plug. I mean, so much goes along with that. Have you ever been in one of those idiot moments where you're working on a computer for like hours? And someone comes in and goes, hey, did you plug it in? You're like, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> and you plug it in, you're like, oh, I'm just wasted an hour of my life trying to figure this thing out. And the problem was it just wasn't connected. Intimacy is a connection. That's a simple way to put it. Another word is it's knowing God. It's knowing God. I, I'm kind of a Facebook addict. How many Facebook addicts are there? Anybody addicted to Facebook? Okay, some of you were honest. Some of you were holding your wife's hands up and your husband's <laughs> hands up. Okay, I can admit it. I'm addicted. Okay. Um, I have it on my phone, I have it on my computer, I'm addicted. And so what I like to do though is kind of find out information about people. I, I like to ask questions. If, if you've ever looked at my Facebook, um, I was talking with someone this morning about one of my questions was, do you prefer the BCS Bowl system or a playoff system in college football? Now, anybody that knows anything about this, you know that it should be a playoff system. Okay, I'm just telling you that right now, okay? You, you're allowed to you have your opinion, I guess, so. Um, but I ask questions like that. What's your favorite food? What's your favorite holiday? What's your favorite Christmas tradition? Whatever. Well, I, I've been thinking a lot about intimacy lately, uh, especially with the events in my own life. And, and so I asked the question, and I word it this way. Serious question, what is intimacy to you? Or, or how would you define intimacy? And, and I have some of their answers here, and honestly, I'm just going to read them off because I'll butcher them if I don't. Um, one person put the sharing of thoughts emotions, and sometimes physical contact between two people. Now, I'm not saying these are wrong. I'm not saying these are right. I'm just saying them, okay? Um, one person put the relationship of the Trinity with each other. Um, one person put many people, especially younger people, simply think sex. Now, if I read yours, I'm not like, because some of you in here actually wrote these. Um, a close, deep, emotionally connected. Um, one person put the fact that you had to start with a serious question will per future prove that people think it's about sex. Uh, someone put emotions definitely, reckless abandonment from fear between two people, communion but not in a wine and bread type of way, synergy in its purest form, breaking barriers of self-involvement that allows a relationship to be raw and real, a closeness that casts um, off any flaws of another to see the true beauty. One person put close relationship, intimacy, the act of extreme openness and transparency with each other. One person simply put safety. Almost to become one with each other, mentally, physically, emotionally, to familiarize yourself with someone else. One person says, I think it is something that can only truly be freely experienced in the marriage relationship. The trust that is required in the marriage relationship allows for intimacy to happen. To know and be known and still like each other. It doesn't need to be between lovers only either. It, these definitions kind of go on and on. And, and my question, even to myself, was... How come the first thing I don't think about when I think of intimacy is my relationship with God? I mean, a lot of times, and I'm not saying these are wrong at all, but I'm just saying a lot of times we don't think of that at all. All right? There's a, a verse in Philippians, chapter 3. Now, now, Paul is actually writing a letter to a group of people, the Philippians and Philippi, and he's, he's writing to them, and he says, Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the priceless gain of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I may have Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own goodness or my ability to obey God's law. As a result, he goes on to say, as a result, I can really know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Now, Paul actually uses two words here. He 
He used the word know, which translates the same way in our language, but in his language it actually has two different meanings. The first time he uses it, it means a general knowledge. Um, like, I know some of you, but we don't have that intimate relationship. I have a general knowledge of you. You have a general knowledge of me. But then the second knowing is like a super complex word. It, it can mean connected, it can mean intimate, it can mean close. Um, <clears throat> But the most the most used meaning though is actually is a sexual type of meaning. It's the same word that when um, it says Mary knew not Joseph, or Mary knew no man. That's why she was a virgin. It's the same word that's used there. And so it's this really complex, this really deep, deep, deep connectedness. And, and so Paul's saying, look, I, I've got the, the the gain of knowing Christ in an informational sense. But I also have this connectedness with them. It's so great. As a result, I can really know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. That, that's pretty cool. To know the power that raised God from the dead. We're able to have that. So what does true intimacy lead to? I mean, not that I'm not trying to say, like, what can we get out of it? Because that would go against what I said at the beginning. But there are some things that true intimacy leads to. The first one is this, a real relationship with the Father. And honestly, to me, this is the coolest one, by far. If you look in the book of Colossians, it, it talks about Christ. And, and this is what it says. It says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before God made anything at all and is supreme over all creation. Christ is the one through whom God created everything, heaven and earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can. Kings, kingdoms, rulers, authorities. Everything has been created through him and for him. He existed before everything else began, and he holds all creation together. Do, do we realize the gravity of what I just read? Christ is supreme. There's nobody better than him, nobody more powerful than him, nobody that knows more than him, nobody that loves greater than him. Nobody, nobody can compare with Christ. And guess what? We get the opportunity to have a true, intimate relationship with that being. I don't know about you, but I forget that sometimes. Because what I do is I take God and I make my little boxes. I make this box, and I make this box, and then I try to fit God into all my different boxes. I say, God, you can be here, and you can be here. But God says, no. I am supreme. <laughs> I think about in Job. When, when Job's asking God, God, why did this happen? I mean, if you know Job, he lost everything. Children, Livelihood, land, house, he himself had boils. And the one person he probably wished would have taken a hike, his nagging wife, didn't. She was still there to continue on that. Now, if Job has, if anybody has a reason to complain, it's that guy. And so Job asked God, God, why? And then this is like the best speech you'll ever find anywhere. Because God just kind of goes off on Job. It says, Joe, where were you when I created the earth? Joe, where were you when I created Behemoth? Where were you when I did this? Where were you when I did this? And he goes on chapter after chapter after chapter asking Joe, Joe, where were you when I? And Joe just realizes it. And he's kind of like, God, I am so sorry. You are completely right. You are the most supreme being. I'm sorry. And sometimes we need to come to that realization that he is supreme, and we get to have an intimate relationship with him. The next one is guidance in our lives. We get guidance in our lives, and I don't know where you're at, but I need guidance. I need it bad. <laughs> like I said, some, some of us in here are going through some really difficult times, and, and if we could sit down and have a conversation, it might not be the best conversation for you because it would be really hard for you even to express what you're going through this time in your life. There's someone that offers guidance. And what that takes is an intimate relationship with God. In Proverbs chapter 3, which is this book in the Bible, it's just full of wisdom. I mean, it's like when you're reading it, it's just like, I need to remember this. I need to do this. I need to remember this. Well, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. 